Hi, you're watching Alex Lab channel. This is the fifth part of the season for composite materials. And today in the video, we will analyze how to make from simple materials four tools to accurately determine the hardness of the coating and compare them to each other and how to make the cover themselves. You will clearly see the properties of the most popular materials, including spray paints, varnishes, all types of epoxy resin, as well as the main characters of the Garage Hollywars protective outer coatings, liquid ceramics and polyurethane film. All books, PDF guides, drawings and 3D models are available for channel members, so let's begin! In the last video we studied such properties of composite materials as strength and determined which composites are best used for small models and which ones for car bodies and body armor. Today we will focus on the surface front layer of details or rather how to make a smooth and shiny coating so that it doesn't scratch, doesn't chip, doesn't fade and retain its original properties for as long as possible. Therefore today we are interested in such a property as hardness that is the ability of material to resist incorporation of another, more rigid body under load. The hardness of the outer layer also responsible for resistance to scratch and chips. Of course, there are ready-made hardness testers for various measurements methods, but firstly, they are rare and quite expensive. And secondly, different hardness testers work by different methods by different scales, and their results are not always easy to compare. As a result, we get a task like the hardness of epoxy resin is between 20 and 30 on the Brunel scale, depending on the hardener. The hardness of ABS plastic according to the Shore D scale is 80 units. Hardness of electroplated copper from 2.5 to 3 on the Moore scale. And the question, which of the material we need to use so the scratches less, and if it gets stretched, and I promise this, then what kind of coating is cheaper to restore? I think handbook tables can be used for roof estimation, but to answer all these questions, it is better to take your own measurements. Each test I run with dozens of different coatings and selected for demonstration those materials which, according to the comments under the previous videos, you use most often in your projects and which are of the great interest in terms of hardness testing. So sit back and relax to see our applicants who will fight for the honor today be used in your projects and in my composite suit. Number 1. Structural Aluminum AA2124 Most popular and available at any hardware store material for various homemade products which is easy to process, cut and bend. This material is familiar to everyone by touch, so I took it to compare the hardness of other materials with it. Number 2. Electroplated copper on a PLA plastic part. I did a big video about this technology practical electroplating, take a look if you haven't seen it yet. Number 3. PLA acrylic primer and spray paint, classic combination of materials for cosplay suits and other DIY printed crafts. Number 4. The same PLA primer and paint, but all this covered by acrylic varnish to finally determine which is better. Paint over and touch up the scratches, or cover the paint with varnish and try to polish scratches on it. Number 5 and number 6 – PLA with epoxy and the same with soft automotive acrylic varnish. Here is the philosophical question is, what kind of material better tolerate aggressive impact, hard due to stability or soft due to low damping? Number 7 – PLA reinforced with epoxy and carbon. A very interesting contender, I want to see how this coating will react for mechanical damage, because until now I can't part with the idea of a carbon fiber suit. Well, at least carbon fiber out layer. Number 8. Polyurethane film over epoxy. Just trying to figure out if I want to give 1700 US dollars to rub the car in film. Number 9, 10 and 11. As popular as film car protection method, liquid ceramic in 1, 2 and as I was offered in the servers, in 10 layers. Number 12. Polyurethane film scratch over ceramic, because in detailing center they offered me such a thing. The calculation of this combination seemed to be that ceramics create a thin protective layer harder than varnish and the polyurethane film dampens incoming stones on the contrary due to damping protection. And number 13. Still not exist Frankenstein material which you would still ask me to make. This is PLA reinforced with a carbon fiber and epoxy resin filled in 10 layers of liquid ceramics and covered all with a polyurethane film. 
Honestly, if there was adamantium, I would add it too. And now, a few words about the preparations of the plates, so that you can repeat any of these materials by yourself. All coatings are applied and installed in accordance with the manufacturer's data sheet and instructions on the package. The base of all props is PLA plastic, because I plan to use the 3D printing as a basis of the following projects, uh, therefore I work out coverage on a future basis. Liquid Beauty, Filler or Primer apply on the base in two layers with intermediate grinding. Spray Paint and Automotive Repair Varnish also apply in two layers with an interlayer drying of 10 minutes. Structural Epoxy Resin with Polyethylene Polyamine Hardener apply in two layers with 3 hours brill between layers. This is the perfect dwell time for multi-layers. The first layer no longer spreads but remains a bit sticky. With this application the layers will chemically stick together, give minimal shrinkage, do not boil and form one even layer. Carbon fiber is laid in the same way as we did in the strength tests. After full curing we green the plates with the help of an eccentric machine with 400 discs dry. All processing must be done on one board, so the hardness test results will be more accurate. After dry mechanical grinding, we debuff the parts so that there are no large grains left on them and proceed to wet sanding with 800 paper. When grinding by hand, it is better to avoid circular motions and grind the surface crosswise, horizontally and vertically, circular risks from the previous sandpaper harder to interrupt than straight lines. Also, according to seller's instructions, install a protective polyurethane film. To do this, we will need to prepare a soap and alcohol solution, a soft microfiber cloth, a stationary knife and plastic card. If teeny air bubbles remain under the film, they can be removed with a medical syringe. Liquid ceramic is easier to apply than film. This is especially noticeable if the parts are not flat but have complex geometry. Dry. Debust and degree the surface, shake the jar before opening, then apply the composition to the applicator and distribute it cross movements over the entire surface. After 3 minutes when the composition dries a little and becomes cloudy, polish the coating with a soft cloth without strong pressure under the weight of the hand. Using the same technology we apply the required number of layers uh, the time of interlay exposure, in accordance with the instructions, is 1 hour, therefore it is easy to calculate how much time you need to kill for applying 2 and 10 layers. But since the girl at the detailing center swore that even 2 layers of ceramics on this BMW make the car simply bulletproof, then a coating of 10 layers, stones from under the wheels apparently just have to fly around at a distance. So when all probes are ready, we can proceed to the hardness tests. The first method is used specifically to determine the hardness of a car body paintwork and I really like its simplicity. We buy a standard set of 12 pencils of different hardness and try to scratch the coating, starting with the softest lead. The hardness of the pencil that is the first to leave an indentable scratch assigns surfaces. The hardness of automotive repair varnishes reaches a hardness of 4-5B. Factory varnishes are usually harder, 2-3B and the most resistant polyurethane varnishes reach a hardness of B. For results to be relevant and all tests were made with the same angles and pressure, a simple holder machine is used, which can be easy to make from improvised means. Never mind if you don't have the tools which are shown in the video, such a machine can be made from anything, even print on a 3D print. Just remember the technical task. We need to provide a pencil angle of 45 degrees, pressure on the stylus in region of 450 grams and, if possible, make a comfortable pencil holder, so the pencil can be changed quickly. By the way, Henry Ford in his book My Life, My Achievements mentioned that workers with the highest qualification were not the ones who assembled the cars in the factories and those who made tools for production. So, making your own tools not only saves money and improves your skills, but it also indicates a high qualification.
according to the regulations of the international standard number 15184 for pencil hardness, and yes, such a standard really exists, the lead cone is blunted with a sandpaper before the test with 1000 grit to an even circle diameters with the rod itself. The measurement technique is extremely simple. We install the softest pencil in the holder so that the body of the machine is horizontal. Slowly roll the machine, running the lead over the surface. If the trace of the pencil is erased with a rack, then we take the next hardest pencil and repeat the process until the pencil scratches the surface. The hardness of the first pencil to scratch taken as a result. In the same way we take test of all probes. Before each test we sharpen or rather blunt the pencil on sandpaper or turn the pencil so that it slides on the new surface with the fresh sharp edge of the stylus. Be sure to record the hardness of each material in a diary or notes. These data will not only help you compare which coating is harder than another, but also allow you to quickly select right polish paste and right hardness for polishing disc for your material. Such a simple test that anyone can repeat at home allows you to quickly arrange materials, increasing hardness and scratch resistance. I suggest to put off all conclusions until the end of the remaining tests in order to compare each material in all aspects and the end. And here we will use the method of solid penetration of the indenter, same method as used in hardness testers of Brinell, Rockwell, Vickers and Shore. The one you see now measures the very narrow range of hard rubbers and soft plastics and for example for epoxy it is useless. Therefore I also propose to replace this apparatus with improvised means. We just take any hard alloy sharp tool such as core of drill, in my case it is fixed center from lath with a 60 degree end. Fix such a tip in a drilling machine, drill stand or any fixed DIY holder. Place test bars on electronic scales and then make a series of dents with the same force, for example 10 kilos. After that, measure the diameter of the dents as accurately as possible using electric clipper or micrometer. Then put all the data in a table and also put off the conclusions to the end of the old tests. But for now, try to guess on what surface, in addition to dents, craters are also formed. After determining the resistance of materials to scratches and dents, it is also interesting to know how they react to shock loading and chips, because here soft coatings can perform better than hard ones. Once again, don't worry about the lath. As I said, I ran tests with dozens of materials with different hardness which are not included in this video and they required strikers of different weights and shapes which are easiest to carve on lath. The impact test is even simpler than previous ones, we throw a striker on the plates and evaluate the damage. For more accurate results I used one metro pipe, machine a striker weighing exactly 100 gram with an angle of 45 degrees and rounded it like a ball. With each material I ran at least three tests. So for each material I threw a rounded 100 gram striker from a height of 1 meter. After all tests, I measured the diameter and depth of each bump and recorded if there were any chips or cracks. I do not want to hint at the diamond hardness of some coatings, but guess on which coating the most monstrous chips and cracks turn out. As usual we enter all the data in the diary and finally we move on in the most simple test. This test is not as elegant as the pencil test. On the other hand, it will make it possible to more clearly assess the hardness of the coatings. Take a peeling sandpaper with a grid of 80, fix the sheets on the table and measure the distance of 1 meter. Lay the test bars face down, press them on top with a 2 kilos plate, stretch from start to finish and evaluate the results. Now we have enough information to evaluate the hardness and wear resistance of materials and understand what material do we need for exact project. Aluminium hardness from F to H according to the pencil test. Easily wrinkled from bumps, easily to straighten, easily scratched and even easier to sand. It tolerates all tests against the background of the coatings because, you know, it's still metal. 
Let's not dwell on it, because it cannot be coated on another material and it doesn't count at all. I took it as a material familiar to everyone, which it is convenient to compare other materials. Electroplated copper. Harder than aluminum and all other probes, because again it's a metal and it's okay for it. Scratch with a pencil with a hardness above 4H, polished in a minute than the original shine. The better the surface is polished, the more difficult it is to scratch, therefore polishing of any surface is done not only for the decorative purposes. Resistant to dents and bumps strongly depends on the layer thickness, and this is the main drawback. If copper of sufficient thickness is built up with the help of electroplating, so that it resists dents well, we increase the weight of the part so much that it becomes unreasonable. Therefore, usually a copper layer is used as a base for applying a hard coating such as nickel chromium. But coating nickel with chromium requires hard to find chemistry, and if you calculate the cost of all the layers needed to cover the hull, including graphite varnish, copper, vitriol, and other expensive components, then this technology becomes too expensive for small scale production. PLA with a spray paint has hardness of 2B and the same part coated with acrylic varnish from the same manufacturer with a hardness between 4B and 3B. That is, the protective varnish is softer than paint and this must be taken in account when choosing a coating. Yes, the varnish protects the paint layer but not because it is less scratched, but because it scratches himself instead of paint. With the same of abrasive load, the painted part will be scratched to plastic and painted and varnished only to primer. Incoming stones will also leave more visible marks on the varnish than on unvarnished paint. So if two coatings are damaged about the same, then I would choose a coating which is easier to repair, that is just a spray paint. Anyway, PLA coating with automotive primer and spray paint remains a great option for most 3D printer DIY projects. Suits for cosplay, bodies of small gadgets, car models and other equipment, the main advantages of such a coating are extremely low cost and speed of manufacture. Usually a 3D model is printed while you are sleeping or doing something else. Acrylic primer dries in just 2 hours. The primer is also polished quickly because it is soft and it only takes a couple of sheets of sandpaper. The paint dries in 2 hours, the varnish also dries in 2 hours. As a result, the coating can be done in one day, even taking into account all drying intervals. If we talk about coating on the same part of epoxy resin, it will take no less than one week, due to the long polymerization of the resin and much more time spent on grinding. So, never make the coating harder than it necessary for the operation of the part. It is longer, more difficult and much more expensive. Number 5 and 6 – Structural Epoxy Resin and the same resin covered with a spray varnish. The hardness of epoxy is highly dependent on the type of hardener. For all probes, I use polyethylene polyamine hardener in the standard rating of 1 to 10. The pencil test showed a hardness of 4H or higher. That is, the epoxy resin coating is several times harder than factory car paints. Of course, factory car varnishes must perform other tasks, resistance to bending, temperature changes and UV resistance, but for now, let's focus on hardness. Epoxy is harder to scratch than other coatings. Even when it's scratched, it is elementary to repair it. Minor scratches just polished and medium and deep can be pre-sanded, covered with a new layer of epoxy and then also polished. That is, for repairs you need only epoxy resin, sandpaper and everything for polishing. The epoxy resin is dent resistant and at identical pressing of 10 kilos on the indenter, the diameter is even smaller than aluminum and copper. Probably, high hardness is offset by the great brittleness, therefore epoxy resistant packs and chips worse than soft coatings, which leads to diverging cracks. Epoxy resin coated with automatic varnish doesn't respond much better to dents, Soft decorative epoxy resin will respond better to chips and dents, since the hardness is several times less and when solidified it approaches hardness of polyurethane coating or hard rubber. But such resin scratches faster and it is harder to polish. Polyurethane film is definitely a working thing. The main point is to understand exactly how it works. The film has a hardness of 3H to 4H according in the pencil test, that is the harder than car varnish but softer than epoxy. The main difference between the film and any other protective coating, and this is why if it's not entirely correct to put it in one line with the rest, 
its enormous thickness, due to which the film, in addition to hardness, also performs great elasticity. In simple words, we are wrapping a car in a 0.2 mm protective damper. Tests confirm that film perfectly protects the car paintwork from scratches, dents and chips, from scratches due to great hardness and varnish, and from dents and chips due to the large thickness and softening the bumps. Conditional disadvantages of the film are not associated with the operation, but with the installation. This is a complex and expensive process for which ideally you need to disassemble the car a little, remove the handles and moldings. Moreover, the more complex geometry of the body, the more difficult and expensive the installation. Liquid ceramic wax. As I expected, in order to scratch this coating we didn't need a diamond glass cutter, but a simple pencil with a hardness of 3H was enough. So, ceramic coating is harder than varnish, but softer than epoxy and even softer than film, regardless of the number of layers. The main advantages of the ceramic, it is very easy to apply, to cover large parts such as roof, a partner is not needed as in the case of the film, and when applied correctly, it really gives extra depth, shine, volume and caramel effect. If the car has already polished, cleaned and prepared, then applying ceramics is the best anti-stress that you can do in your garage. But disadvantages of the ceramics become apparent after tests. Ceramic protects against bumps, but under the same load, a dent in the factory varnish looks like a small dot and on ceramics as a huge crater. The same with bumps. A stone that has flown into the factory varnish leaves a small depression. The same stone on ceramics leaves chips, craters and diverging cracks. Moreover, on 10 layers these cracks will be more noticeable than on one layer. You know, free seasonal body protection behaves approximately the same, known in Canada, for example, as the brand name of Simple Ice. Scratches on ceramic look just as noticeable as on regular varnish. It turned out an interesting contradiction. Ceramics really protect the paint of your car, but only because it just scratches and cracks instead of paint. Moreover, the same damage will look worse on ceramics than factory coverage. As for the number of layers, they didn't lie to me either. Indeed, two layers of ceramics protect better than one layer. Ten layers is better than two. Probably 50 layers will protect even better than ten. No marketing. It is just ten layers take longer to scratch than one and two. But firstly, the more layers, the more noticeable clouding of the original cover when applying ceramics. Secondly, the thicker the layer, the more noticeable are the chips and craters from those dummy stones that still didn't want to fly away, although they saw that there is 10 layers of expensive ceramics on a car. Finally, a rhetorical question, unless when paying in the service you are not given a 10 hours video record about how your car is covered with another layer of ceramic every hour, how exactly do you check the number of layers by the depth of craters from the stones? No micrometer can tell the difference between 1 and 10 layers. Also, do not forget that both film and ceramics require special treatment at car washes and this is also increase the cost of the car washes. Number 12 and 13 with film over ceramics only confirm the advantages of the film and the disadvantages of the ceramics in all tests. Calculation in such a super sandwich that ceramic makes the surface harder and the film works as a softening damper. But in fact, ceramics under the film only makes it worse because it cracks from impacts and you cannot do anything with it craters. I specifically skipped number 7 reinforced with carbon fiber and resin to highlight it separately. As with other structural epoxy faceplates, pencil hardness is in the region of 4H or slightly higher. That is, it scratches harder than other coatings not counting metal. But with shock loading and the introduction of an indenter, this coating behaves much better than simple epoxy and doesn't crack, probably due to the reinforcing action of the carbon fiber. And if you also consider that the repair of epoxy coating simpler than any other, then I would give the first place to this particular coating, which again inspired the hope for a carbon fiber suit. I mean carbon fiber face layer. You will find a bunch of projects on YouTube when fiberglass composite parts are wrapped in carbon fiber because, you know, everyone wants the part to be as cheap as fiberglass, but it looks like a carbon fiber part. From the point of view of increasing strength, such an undertaking is useless due to the fact that fiberglass and carbon fiber have completely different properties, tensile and stiffness. But if the front layer of the part is made of soft PLA as we do, inside the part is reinforced with fiberglass and on the outside it is reinforced with the carbon fiber, 
then this definitely makes sense in terms of increasing the hardness of the coating. So, which coating should we choose for our projects? From simple to complex. For the first project with 3D printing, helmets, suits, vehicle models, use a simple, cheap and proven combination – PLA plastic, automatic liquid primer and acrylic spray paint. The varnish certainly protects the paint from scratches, dents and water, but it scratches itself easily. The only time when varnish is definitely needed uh, – this is when you apply graphite powder on the top of your paint to give metallic look. Such a graphite layer is like butterfly pulling and it needs to be fixed with varnish. That is, the primer and paint give a minimum problems, tolerance for errors in processing and quick result by the evening. A quick and effective result is the best motivator to do more complex projects. For the manufacture of frame, chassis, supporting structure and the rest of the filling we take aluminium. Easy to get, easy to handle, drill and cut, that is we make the filling out of it and not the body. Unless of course you have access to aluminum alloy from which the case of MacBook is made, this hardness of the coating is quite suitable for the outer layer. If you have mastered the previous skills and want to achieve a metallic sheen not by imitation with different paints and varnishes and with the real metal, use electroplating. This is the easiest way to create shiny mirror-like metallic finish on a non-metallic basis such as blank from 3D printing. Especially if you have access to nickel sulfate and chromium anhydride then copper can be coated with nickel chromium, then, in addition to gloss, you will also get high hardness and excellent protective properties. To create body parts that will be used every day and will be subjected to mechanical stress, use epoxy coating. It is harder than more varnishes and easy to repair. As one of the more complex options, use reinforcement of the outer layer with carbon fiber. It is not only visually cool, but also increases the resistance to mechanical damage, especially if the original part is made of plastic. To protect surfaces with relatively simple geometry, you can use polyurethane film for cars. It perfectly withstands abrasion, chips and bumps, keeps the original coating intact and gives great color depth. Based on tests, I cannot recommend liquid ceramics if we talk about it as a reliable protective coating, especially considering the minimum price in Moscow – US$300 for covering the body of a regular sedan. If your task is only to improve the visual properties, then there are glazes, waxes, sealants or polymers for this which are also applied simply in one layer, but they do not give such monstrous cracks and chips. For myself and for the composite protective suit, I noted the carbon reinforced epoxy coating as it is ideal for reinforcing the plastic layer, which in any case will be printed on my printer. If you have questions about materials or angry thoughts in defense of ceramics, please do not keep it to yourself and share it in the comments, only be sure to mention the company or composition so I could do the tests. Look for the answers in the questions in my pinned comment under this video. In the next video, I want to use all achievements in composites over the past year to show my own technology for manufacturing body parts. Don't forget to become AlexLab member to get access to all books, drawings and 3D models. See you in the next week and good luck with your own projects!